Kurt Vogel Russell is an American actor. At the age of 12, he began acting in the Western series The Travels of Jamie McFeeters. Born March 17, 1951, age 73 years, Springfield, Massachusetts. Children, Wyatt Russell, Boston Russell. Spouse, Susan Hubley, M. 1979-1983. Height, 5 foot 9. Parents, Bing Russell, Louise Julia Russell. Partner, Goldie Hawn, 1983. Kurt Vogel Russell was born on March 17, 1951 in Springfield, Massachusetts, and raised in Thousand Oaks, California to Louise Julia Russell, Nate Crone, a dancer and Bing Russell, an actor. He is of English, German, Scottish and Irish descent. His first roles were as a child on television series, including a lead role on the Western series The Travels of Jamie McFeeters, 1963. Russell landed a role in the Elvis Presley movie, It Happened at the World's Fair, 1963, when he was 11 years old. Walt Disney himself signed Russell to a 10-year contract, and, according to Robert Osborne, he became the studio's top star of the 1970s. Having voiced adult copper in the animated Disney film The Fox and the Hound, 1981, Russell is one of the few famous child stars in Hollywood who has been able to continue his acting career past his teen years. Kurt spent the early 1970s playing minor league baseball. In 1979, he gave a classic performance as Elvis Presley in John Carpenter's ABC TV movie Elvis, 1979, and married the actress who portrayed Priscilla Presley in the film, Season Hubley. He was nominated for an Emmy Award for the role. He followed with roles in a string of well-received films, including Used Cars, 1980, and Silkwood, 1983 for which he was nominated for the Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actor, Motion Picture. During the 1980s, he starred in several films by director Carpenter, they created some of his best-known roles, including the infamous anti-hero Snake Plissken in the futuristic action film Escape from New York, 1981, and later in its sequel Escape from L.A., 1996, Antarctic helicopter pilot R.J. McCready in the horror film The Thing, 1982, and Jack Burton in the fantasy film Big Trouble in Little China, 1986, all of which have since become cult classics. In 1983, he became reacquainted with Goldie Hawn, who appeared with him in the one and only, genuine, original family band, 1968, when they worked together on Swing Shift, 1984. The two have lived together ever since. They made another film together. Gary Marshall's Comedy Overboard, 1987. His other 1980s titles include The Best of Times, 1986, Tequila Sunrise, 1988, Winter People, 1989, and Tango and Cash, 1989. In 1991, he headlined the firefighter drama Backdraft, 1991, he starred as Wyatt Earp in the western film Tombstone, 1993, and had a starring role as Colonel Jack O'Neill in the science fiction film Stargate, 1994. In the mid-2000s, his portrayal of U.S. Olympic hockey coach Herb Brooks in Miracle, 2004, won the praise of critics. In 2006, he appeared in the disaster thriller Poseidon, 2006, and in 2007, in Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof, 2007, segment from the film Grindhouse, 2007. Russell appeared in The Battered Bastards of Baseball, 2014, a documentary about his father and the Portland Mavericks, which debuted at the Sundance Film Festival in 2014. Russell starred in the Western films Bone Tomahawk, 2015, and The Hateful Eight, 2015, and had a leading role in the dramatization Deepwater Horizon, 2016. He also co-starred in the action sequels Furious 7, 2015, and The Fate of the Furious, 2017. Russell and Goldie Hawn live on a 72-acre retreat, Home Run Ranch, outside of Aspen. He has two sons, Boston Russell, from his marriage to Hubley, and Wyatt Russell, with Hawn. He also raised Hawn's children, actors Oliver Hudson and Kate Hudson, who consider him their father. Russell is also an avid gun enthusiast, a hunter, and a staunch supporter of the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution. 
He is also an FAA-licensed private pilot holding single-slash-multi-engine and instrument ratings, and is an honorary board member of the humanitarian aviation organization Wings of Hope. Family Spouse Season Hubley, March 17, 1979 to May 16, 1983, divorced, one child. Children Boston Russell Oliver Hudson Kate Hudson Wyatt Russell Parents Louise Julia Russell, Crone Bing Russell Relatives Jill Russell, Sibling Jody Russell, Sibling Jamie Russell, Sibling Boone Joseph Russell, Grandchild Franzi Franco, Niece or Nephew Matt Franco, Niece or Nephew Trademarks Often has long hair or a mullet Often performs many of his stunts himself. Often works with John Carpenter. Distinctive gravelly voice. Often plays charming, laid-back characters. Trivia. Snake Plissken, the anti-hero of Escape from New York, 1981, and Escape from L.A., 1996, is his favorite character of all he has played. Said in his audio commentary for Big Trouble in Little China, 1986, that the test audiences reacted so well to the film that he thought for sure that he and director friend John Carpenter had a box office hit on their hands. However, the studio put so little effort into advertising the film that it ultimately didn't do as well at the box office, but became a cult favorite instead. Dating Goldie Hawn since February 14, 1983, Valentine's Day, 1983, for his role on Tombstone, 1993, he was trained by renowned Hollywood gun coach Thel Reed, who has also trained such actors as Val Kilmer, Bill Paxton, Sam Elliott, Leonardo DiCaprio, Ben Foster, and Gerard Swan. Son of Bing Russell, a baseball player and actor, who played the deputy sheriff on Bonanza, 1959, for six years. Kate Hudson, daughter of his longtime companion Goldie Hawn, named her son writer Russell Robinson. The middle name is an homage to Kurt, whom Hudson always considered to be her father. He acted as father to Kate Hudson by walking her down the aisle and giving her away at her wedding to rock star Chris Robinson. He claims that he often felt an outcast in Hollywood because of his libertarian beliefs, and so moved to live in an area outside Aspen, Colorado, where he started to try his hand at writing. One of his heroes since boyhood was John Wayne. He was able to use his dead-on John Wayne impression to Twisted Effect, in Grindhouse, 2007. The lead role in They Live, 1988, was originally written with him in mind. However, John Carpenter, having cast him in three films previously Escape from New York, 1981, The Thing, 1982, and Big Trouble in Little China, 1986, decided to give someone else a go and cast Roddy Piper. Wrote along with the Chicago Fire Department Squad 5 in preparation for his role in Backdraft, 1991. Is an FAA-licensed private pilot holding single-slash-multi-engine and instrument ratings, and is an honorary board member of the humanitarian aviation organization Wings of Hope. Was one of the first actors to do audio commentary on DVDs. Received the Disney Legends Award 1998 for living up to the Disney principles of the Disney Legends Award has three distinct elements that characterize the contributions made by each talented recipient. The spiral stands for imagination, the power of an idea. The hand holds the gifts of skill, discipline, and craftsmanship. The wand and the star represent magic, the spark that is ignited when imagination and skill combine to create a new dream. Made his film debut in the Elvis Presley film, It Happened at the World's Fair, 1963. He later went on to play him in Elvis, 1979, and to provide his voice in Forrest Gump, 1994. Tom Cruise wanted him for the role of Rowdy Burns in Days of Thunder, 1990. It was through Cruise that Russell became aware of Backdraft, 1991. Began Cosmic Entertainment with partner Goldie Hawn, her daughter Kate Hudson and her son Oliver Hudson. Has portrayed cult classic heroes in five different movies, Escape from New York, 1981, The Thing, 1982, Big Trouble in Little China, 1986, Stargate, 1994, 
and Escape from L.A., 1996, graduated from Thousand Oaks High School in Thousand Oaks, California, with Michael Richards. Class of 1969, who voted him best-looking. He was Sylvester Stallone's original choice for Church in the Expendables, 2010, which he turned down. The role went to Bruce Willis. He was offered the role of Alan Grant in Jurassic Park, 1993, but his asking price was too high. The role went to Sam Neill. Is good friends with director John Carpenter. The two have collaborated on five different films, Elvis, 1979, Escape from New York, 1981, The Thing, 1982, Big Trouble in Little China, 1986, and Escape from L.A., 1996. He turned down the role of Connor McLeod in Highlander, 1986, in order to star in Big Trouble in Little China, 1986. The role went to Christopher Lambert. The presence of Lee Van Cleef on the set of Escape from New York, 1981, inspired him to talk in a raspy voice similar to Clint Eastwood's from the Man with No Name trilogy, played pro baseball, second base, AA club, California Angels until a torn shoulder muscle forced retirement in 1973. Was hitting .563 at the time. His friend, Ron Shelton, wrote the Crash Davis role in Bull Durham, 1988, for him. The studio insisted on Kevin Costner, though. Quotes On why he won't marry Goldie Hawn, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I seem to have a knack for picking movies that go on to be cult favorites. If it hadn't been for video cassette, I may not have had a career at all. On the fight scene with Ox Baker from Escape from New York, 1981, I remember Dick Warlock helped set up the fight and he came out with this big purple lump on the side of his head, and all he said to me was, keep your head down and be careful, man. I was brought up as a Republican, but when I realized that at the end of the day, there wasn't much difference between a Democrat and Republican, I became a Libertarian. To go on about acting as art is ridiculous. If it is an art, then it's a very low form. You don't have to be gifted just to hit a mark and say a line. And as far as I'm concerned, hitting my marks and knowing my lines is 90% of the job. I'm always criticized for talking like that. Maybe the reason I do it is that I never got the chance to develop a real desire to act. I was acting by the time I was nine, so it seemed like a natural thing to do. Anyone who finds acting difficult just shouldn't be doing it. You know, when Escape from New York, 1981, first came out, a lot of people said, I don't quite understand this movie. Is this some kind of comment that, like, New York is a prison? And years later, a lot of people are saying, you know, New York is looking a lot like that movie. In Escape from L.A., 1996, it's a story about a guy who just wants a cigarette. He just wants a cigarette. Everybody laughed back then, because there was no red meat, no cigarettes in the movie. Well, look around. It's happening, you can barely smoke a cigarette anymore, and although I quit smoking six months ago, the anti-smoking laws are enough to make me want to smoke. My generation couldn't stand me, and I couldn't stand them. In high school, I was to the right of being straight. I believed in the work ethic, making money, and they all had this beef with the nation. Vietnam disappointed me, because we didn't win. 1996, for me, there's never been a woman more beautiful than Ingrid Bergman in Casablanca, 1942. 1996, on smoking marijuana, I never did, not until I was 32. I still don't understand the reason for smoking dope if you're not going to have sex. To me, drugs have no appeal other than sex. 1996, Bull Durham, 1988 is tough to talk about. Director, Ronnie, Ron Shelton, and I both lived that life, there were a lot of things in there that were derivative of what had happened to me. I was surprised that Ronnie, did, it was somebody else. I went to Europe on a vacation, having said the script was great, and I came back to discover Kevin, Kevin Costner, was doing it. Ronnie got a better deal, so I pulled a practical joke on him that wiped the slate clean for me. I was working on Winter People, 1989, about 60 miles from where he was doing Bull Durham, 1988. I got on the phone, pretended to be, production chief, Mike Metavoy, ordered that Ronnie be pulled off the set, 
and I told him that the dailies were shit, the movie was shit and Costner was not working, here's what we're going to do, I told him. Kurt Russell 60 miles north of you finishing Winter People, 1989, tonight. He will be on the set Monday morning. There was this long pause until Ronnie realized who he was really talking to, and then he said, you son of a bitch. I had him going for a few minutes, though. 1996, the only time in my entire life as an actor when I felt I didn't know what I was doing was on Tango and Cash, 1989, when I had to dress up as a woman. It's not an acting chore I'd care to do again. I looked like a really ugly version of my mother, who happens to be beautiful. I don't get transvestism. 1996, when I read Executive Decision, 1996, it was a real page-turner. I read scripts for the movies more than I do for the characters. I've read lots of characters I'd like to play, but I didn't enjoy the movie itself that much. I liked the fun of Executive Decision, 1996, you know, I feel when an audience sees my name attached to a film, they think it'll probably be a pretty good movie. The movies I do, if we make them well, will be fun to watch. They may not be the best movie of the year, and I may not be your favorite actor, but people come up to me all the time and say, I like the movies you do. 1996, it would be fun to have enough money to have a small restaurant where you could have your eclectic group of friends come in and get a good meal and be able to scream and holler, about politics, about anything you could be able to afford to lose $200,000 a year on it and it wouldn't make a difference. I'd like to have a jet airplane that I could fly, which would get me back and forth to Aspen inside of two hours, so that Aspen could become a weekend place. I'd like to have enough money to be able to afford some things for my family that I know they could use. Then, too, you know, certain humanitarian things like, financing a school which could make a difference. 1996, on his passion for hunting and where that started, my grandfather owned a hotel along Kennebago Lake in Maine. It had 31 log cabins and was built in 1887. I grew up watching all the guys going out in snowshoes while I played with my sister in the yard, and they'd come back with a deer. And then I got old enough to go with them. I grew up thinking that was the way to live. You could feed yourself, you could have corn in your garden, you could stock things in a barn, you didn't need anybody to do anything. And my grandparents were doing that. My grandfather was a phenomenal shot. And I watched my dad shoot deer, impossible shots when I could barely even see the deer. Goldie's a great game cook. We have a party every New Year's Day in Old Snowmass, where everybody just watches the football games, and they have Goldie's elk stew. We cook as much of the stuff as we can and finish it every time. And she enjoys that. 1996, I am like Thomas Jefferson or Benjamin Franklin. I love life. I have a comic outlook, I laugh at myself harder than at anybody else. I get extremely vociferous about things I don't believe in, but I'm in the moment. Benjamin Franklin loved life, he wasn't a negative person. And I do sense that I'm being more perceived like that now. 1996, on being part of the Hollywood community, at times I take great pride in it. But most of the time I'm completely ashamed of it, especially on the night of the Academy Awards. It's the one night of the year where I just want to crawl in a hole and hide. It's a bit like standing shoulder to shoulder with assholes. Mike Nichols and I were talking about politics once, and he said, It's easy to listen to actors talk about integrity, but I think the truth is, if you're going to make your living as an actor, your integrity is what you run into, it's not what you run with. If you went with that and no actor ever has, you'd never work. I remember one time being told I never read it that I had been referred to as Disney's little Nazi. I was just like, wow. You either continue to work, or it hurts you enough that you quit. You're always able to just walk away, nobody's twisting your arm to stay in this business. On The Expendables, 2010, I mean, I'm glad Slice done well with this. He's a great person. The fellas all seem to have a good time. I've never seen any of them. It's not a beat I get. It's like looking backwards to me. Salaries. Vanilla Sky, 2001, $5 million. Soldier, 1998, $15 million. Breakdown, 1997, $15 million. 
Escape from LA, 1996, $10 million. Executive Decision, 1996, $7,500,000. Stargate, 1994, $7 million. The Thing, 1982, $400,000. Thank <laughs> you.